Ice axe, what are they? And well, what are the ones that you need to know for this exam? Stick around, that's our conversation. You're watching IT Pro TV. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the SISA Plus series. And I did something that I don't like to do. I threw you an acronym and I didn't define it. So we're <laughs> here to talk about information sharing and analysis centers. Dan, where do we get started? Oh, I guess we should start with, well, you you have uh, at least defined the acronym for us. So I appreciate that. All right, very good. Nice, uh, nice toss up <laughs> Throw from, you some alphabets from my man, here. Wes. But let's define what that actually means, right? What we mean is these are there are industries, there are certain industries in the world uh, probably in your country, my country. I know we have a largely U.S. base, but they could be out there in U.K., Europe somewhere, Australia. You never know, right? But each one of our areas probably have different industries that could impact human life or health or even national security if cyber attack was, if a cyber attack was uh, very uh, successful against them. And because of that, well, at least here in the United States, they, uh, the government has said, you know, what would be a good idea is if each one of those industries kind of made it a public-private uh, entity that would share very specific data that they have accumulated and gathered and been collecting. When I say data, I mean threat intelligence uh, against their actual production systems. And if they shared that with each other, because they're such a, uh, an organization that could impact humans' life or their health or maybe the national security at large, it would be a good idea for them to just start sharing that information with each other so that they could do a better job at securing those types of industries. And hence, ISACs were born. And I think this was around the mid to late 90s, somewhere around there historically, um, if I'm getting my, my numbers correct. They said, okay, let's do this. Let's start collecting this information. And it's not just that, oh, well, you know, you kind of need to look out for these guys and look out for that. It is real stuff. It's real logs. It's real analysis, real time spent understanding those threats and those ones, uh, those attacks that have actually been leveraged against their systems how they recovered, how they secured against it, how they kept it at bay or fell prey to it one way or the other. All this information needs to be shared. So if Wes and I are in a specific industry that could potentially impact you or I or the security of our nation, it would be a good idea for us to get together once in a while and say, hey man, let me give you some information that will help you because this was, this was really bad for us and it took us a long time to recover. Let's keep you from having that happen. I would hate to see the same kind of thing go that way because it ended up costing people maybe their lives. So it's a really important thing, and it's a really good thing that it's around, but that's why it's here. That's what it's all about, and hopefully that makes sense as we move through the different ISECs that we are going to look at today. You know, Dan, you uh, kind of teased a little bit. He's lots of cheese, isn't he, right? You mentioned uh, probably, I would think of one that uh, probably has a very big bullseye on their chest, and that's uh, healthcare. You know, hmm. worldwide, you said affects human lives. That's right. This is definitely one I can think of at the top of the list that would affect human lives. How does that apply to healthcare? Yeah, great question. Healthcare is one of the big ones, man. We see this all the time. We know how important the HIPAA regulations are and how if we don't follow them, you get in big trouble, you get big smacks on the hand. Uh, fines and penalties and stuff leveraged against you because that PHI, that private health and for that personal health information is um, all, all very much being sought after by uh, uh, different organizations. And you're seeing that day to day to day all the time. They are constantly trying to um, protect their information against things like cyber criminals. Many times that's exactly what they're worried about is that data, their patient's information, being put in the wrong hands. That's the kind of stuff that could lead to real problems for us as individuals. Uh, if people knew things about you that you did not want them to know, or maybe they could use that for blackmail or use it for identity theft, which a lot of times is exactly what occurs. So cyber criminals many times are, are who are after that specific information. That being said, let's take a look at a website that if you were in that health space, 
would uh, be the ISAC you're looking for, which is H-ISAC. Let me zoom into the URL, which is right there for you. H-ISAC.org. That's where you're going to want to go. Be familiar with that for the exam. And then right here just kind of talks about, uh, thank you for members for 10 great years. This is where you would come as a health provider or organization and your security team would create a login, become a part of the group, and start sharing that threat intelligence and risk assessments. So here we go. The uh, Health Information Sharing and Analysis Center is a global, nonprofit, member-driven organization offering healthcare stakeholders a trusted community and forum for coordinating, collaborating, and sharing vital physical and cyber threat intelligence and best practices with each other. Sums it up beautifully. If you want to become a part of this and you are in that space, I highly recommend it because you're going to get some real data that you can sink your teeth into that's going to help you better secure your industry. You know, another one that I would say that's probably a pretty big topic, especially here in April of 2020, healthcare obviously is going to be one of the biggest ones for sure. But I would say probably up there on the list is where are you keeping your money? So I would think financial would be another one that we yeah. have to worry about uh, as well, right? Right on point, right? The financial industry is rife for attack. I was just at uh, B-Sides not too long ago, right before the whole coronavirus thing and everybody was sequestered to their home. I was actually allowed to go outside and mingle with other people. It was fun. And I was at this conference, a security conference. It's called B-Sides, which was a, a local conference here. There's, they're all over the place. But it was really good because the keynote speaker was from that financial industry. And they were talking about the attacks and the things that kept them up at night every day and what they were having to do and conversations that they had to have with their C-levels and what was the main focus of threats out in the world for them. Now, cool thing is, just like the health industry, uh, but it was, it was a really good talk. She had a lot of great information because she's in the trenches doing this. So we were, we were hearing a lot of uh, really great information about how they were trying to protect. I would bet dimes to donuts, a dollars to donuts, hundreds of dollars to donuts, that they are part of our next website, which we need to be familiar with, which is the FSISAC. Let me get that for you right there you go. www.fsisac.com, which is the financial industry's ISAC, right? Safeguarding the global financial systems by reducing cyber risk. And there you go. You can register for their virtual summit if you wanted to get a little more information about that. Uh, right around 7,000 institutes, over 15, or around 50,000 users in 70 jurisdictions. Ju I can't say that. Jurisdictions. Addictions. That's the word I was looking for. Financial Services Information Sharing and Analysis Center is an industry consortium dedicated to reducing cyber risk. So yada, yada, yada. It's the same kind of idea, but it's in that financial vein. Um, I guess we, we could get into who keeps them up at night. Uh, the lady at the, I can't remember her name, but she, she I think she works for like Goldman Sachs or something. Huge financial yeah, industry uh, or um, organization. She said uh, North Korea was their big, uh, oh, the, the financial industry's big APT. They said, she said they fund their entire, well, not entire, but they fund a lot of their country's, like, goings on, how to keeping them afloat by stealing money from the financial industry via hacking, and that they are grooming children from a very young age to learn how to hack. And they, she said they are very good hackers, and it takes them a lot of time and effort to do exactly what we're talking about here, getting real-time data and analysis, risk analysis as well into that sphere to make sure that they are being protected as well as possible because uh, the hackers that are coming after them, typically cyber th you know, um, criminals looking to steal and pill for the pockets of these financial industries uh, because they got a lot of money, a uh, good place to go for that. Um, so we'll see fraud, we'll see extortion, going through here because of those deep pockets. Let me just get at that money in some way, shape, or form, and I'll be happy. So much so that a country could finance itself for a large portion of it um, through that mean, through those means. So if you're in the financial sphere, check out FS ISAC or definitely be aware of it for the exam. You know, the next one I'm thinking of, uh, well, I'm actually thinking of Die Hard 2 for some reason, and I don't know why. But you know, we talk about global transportation and stuff. We think about aviation, right? This has to be a very, um, you know, a, a very important infrastructure that we've got to keep secure as well. Right? Yeah, totally. I mean, you think aviation, this is 
one of the major forms of travel. I'm, I'm sure the other travel industries probably have their own ISAC as well, but aviation is one they specifically call out for SISA Plus, so we're going to kind of uh, take a look at that, put the microscope over it for just a second. Again, they've got their own website as well. Here we go. Let's just make you familiar with that. Let's jump into this. There it is, the www. There you go. Can't highlight it all. Uh, A-ISAC.com, right, for aviation. The Aviation Sharing and Analysis Center. And there we go. Real-time... Th- what did you... I love it when it... I love the, the scrolling things. Real-time analysis of aviation threats. Um... You got to think that this is probably an important industry because of the history behind the aviation business, even before large scale computing was a thing, right? Historically, who has gone after aviation? That has been terrorists, right? Terrorists have hijacked planes and done all sorts of crazy stuff with that. So it just seems natural that. Once cyber threats became an issue, that they would have to worry about about that as well, because cyber terrorism, um, and I'm I'm sure they probably see their fair share of of um, cyber criminals. They do have some money, but I, I I'm thinking in my mind, I definitely am wanting to safeguard against terrorism because it's that life and limb kind of thing, where if someone could take control of the avionics of a plane or change routes or do anything with the systems. That could be really bad. Actually, was at another um, conference last year where they had someone from the aviation industry come in and talk about the susceptibility of the avionics, onboard computers, flight controllers, that kind of stuff. Really interesting stuff. So even if you're not in that space, it's really cool to check out and learn about and to understand a whole lot better. So check out that website, learn a little bit about that, have that familiarity because aviation is an industry that does have an ISAC. So we've looked at uh, things like healthcare, right? Yep. Financial, we've looked at aviation. The other thing I could think of is like government organizations, right? So these massive governmental organizations will probably have to have something like that too, right? Yeah, it, it's funny. Like, um, when we think government, I think federal government. Sure. Right? When yeah, I say sure. government, I think federal government. But the ISAC is actually the, like the local, state, and tribal governments. Interesting. Yeah, so uh, when we bring that up, let me jump over to the first one here which is the MSISAC to improve the overall cybersecurity posture of the nation's state, local, tribal, and territorial governments through focused cyber threat prevention, protection, response, and recovery. And there you go. Let me give you that URL again. Of course, all of these will be in the uh, learner resources, but this is cisecurity.org forward slash MS-ISAC. There you go. So, these are at those uh, more localized level, not so much around the federal level. I'm not saying that there won't be some of that in there, but it does give you some services that are included with that membership. I feel like I'm, I'm selling them at this point, <laughs> but it's good to know about. 24-7 Security Operations Center. Ooh, that's nice. Uh, incident response services. That's actually some, this is, I'm wondering if that's with a paid membership or if it's just all free. I'm good to find out. If you're in this sphere, I would check into this because all those services that they're offering are nice. Malicious code analysis platform. Are you kidding me? Cyber alert map. This is all great resources for somebody in this space. Now let's keep jumping over here. There's even one that I thought was interesting for the elections infrastructure, right? Kind of going again with that, that uh, governmental. So don't think that the elections um, organizations are not worried about cyber threats they definitely are, and they're definitely trying to make that as a secure of a process as possible by sharing that information and forming their own ISAC, which is right here. Let me give you that URL as well. It's going to be at CI uh, Security as well, but it's going to be EI dash uh, ISAC forward slash. There you go. So um, I think that is all the government stuff I had to kind of point you toward. Just understand that it might not necessarily be speaking about the federal government when they say government ISACs. It can be that local, state, uh, tribal, or what was the other one? Um, I always forget that one. Uh, Territorial governments. Keep that in your mind if they say government anywhere. If you're talking about this in some way, shape, or form, or maybe somebody was posing a question, Hmm? you know what I mean, right? About that, that you would want to have those in your mind as being... uh, 
wrapped around governments, right? Have that, have that ready. You know, uh, one that comes to mind as well, Dan, is I think uh, things like, you know, power grids, electrical grids, right? You know, our power plants, nuclear power plants, if you will, water infrastructure as well. Uh, where do they fit into play or, you know, fall into place? Yeah, this will be the critical infrastructure, right? Again, um, one of those, those things that could cause life and limb, right? Wouldn't like that. Or even if uh, Wes mentions things like utilities, power, water, right? If those go away... We've seen what happens when we've had uh, big scale or large scale blackouts. People go crazy. They go a little, little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And that can cause a large disruption in any nation. So, and even life and limb at that point, right? But, and then you have things like nuclear facilities. They are power, they are power plants, uh, typically. But what if? Someone were able to. So we're starting to see the whole terrorism idea uh, and are actively being um, attacked and, and scanned and reconned and the whole nine yards enumerated. And so they have a lot of work uh, ahead of them to do. Let's take a look at the um, website for this, which will be uh, part of the official website of the Department of Homeland Security. This is the CISA.gov critical dash infrastructure dash sectors. And it kind of lays out the different sectors that critical infrastructure is the umbrella term and these sectors fall under it. So let's take a look at those because it's really important for us to understand what those organizations or what those, those infrastructures are. So we've got like the chemical sector, we've got commercial facility sector, the communication sector. It's very important to keep communications up. I mean, that's the whole reason we built the internet was so that we could have fast communications in the event of, of nuclear war so that we could speak from one coast to the other in a manner better than what we had at that point in time, which I think was just the phone systems, maybe radio, right? So we had to build that infrastructure out. So the communication sector is super uh, critical. I think it's one of the, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Wes, you probably know this fact, that when a natural disaster or something like that happens, one of the first things they attempt to get back up immediately will be the telecommunication system. Oh, absolutely. And that's why they rely heavily on the old PSTN-based networks right. because of the fact that they're so prevalent in all countries, regardless of what their, you know, technical advances is, in technology advances yeah, are. Yeah. So super important. Uh, critical manufacturing sector. We also have dams. So that would um, have that going on. Defense industry-based sector. Emergency services. That could be, there's energy. Food and ag. Uh, financial, government. Uh, healthcare. I would assume this is government finances. Um, yeah, Department of the Treasury, right here. I, mean, I can't see those. I know they're little. There you go, Department of the Treasury. Government facilities. So this is where that really that federal level is coming under that critical infrastructure uh, umbrella term. Nuclear reactors. There's healthcare, information technology, obviously, uh, transportation, water and waste systems. So just be familiar that these kind of fall under. These are the the sectors that fall under that critical infrastructure umbrella, so that if, again, you were being posed a question about that, you would know to associate those things together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked about the information sharing and analysis centers, and there are a ton of them out there. However, we focused on things like healthcare, financial aviation. We've also talked about governmental and critical infrastructure for this exam. However, we've got a lot more to go when it comes to talking about this exam and upcoming SISA Plus shows, but you're going to have to join us. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.